Okay guys, so I'm going to talk you through a really common style of exam question that links gravitational and kinetic energy, gravitational potential and kinetic energy. Now, I've already got all the answers and everything laid out here for you, okay? So you can you can just see what's going on. You could probably read through it yourself, but I'm going to talk you through it as well. Now the question is, we've got a, a like a diver, like someone doing a dive into a swimming pool. 50 kilograms, they're 10 meters above the pool. Gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now we've got four questions here, okay? The first question, calculate the gravitational potential energy of the diver. I'm gonna get two or three marks for that, depending on where this is in the exam paper. What is the kinetic energy that they hit the water with? Calculate the maximum speed that the diver will hit the water. And why will the actual speed probably be less than this maximum value? So first of all, we're looking at the first one. Calculate the gravitational potential energy of the diver. Nice and straightforward, we're going to use our gravitational potential energy equation from the top here. MGH, we're going to put 50 in, 9.8 for gravity, 10 for the height in metres. And we type that into our calculator and you would get 4,900 joules. Okay? I did all this a couple of minutes ago. Now, nice and easy start. Everyone should be able to get that. You have to know this equation though. You have to learn this equation. Now the second one is really important here. Now some people look at this second question and they start trying to work out to calculate the kinetic energy and if they're, what's that? they say, I don't know how to do this because I've not got the speed. But the key here is firstly, it's a one mark question. And secondly, it says what is. It doesn't say calculate. Now because it says what is, that means that it's just asking us to identify something. So it's not asking us to actually calculate, it's just saying there is an answer, you just gotta tell me what it is. And the reason we know what that answer is is because we know that the energy, uh, the, the total amount of energy cannot change, okay? So if the diver has 4,900 joules of energy at the top, then assuming that no energy is lost to the surroundings or anything like that, that 4,900 joules of energy is going to get converted into kinetic energy, okay? So the answer is the same as your previous answer. It's just that the diver is going to have 4,900 joules of kinetic energy at the bottom as they hit the water. Calculate the maximum speed that the diver hits the water. Now the reason for the word maximum here, we're going to talk about in more detail in part D, but basically we're just going to have to rearrange this equation. Now, the kinetic energy equation, again, you need to learn this, half mv squared. We can rearrange it. Uh, I did it in one step, but you can actually, I'll, I'll show you how we do that. I put it into a triangle. I covered up v squared. I said v squared equals kinetic energy over half times the mass. And then I square root both sides and you get this, question, this equation here. If I type my numbers into the calculator again, Square root of 4,900 over half times the mass of 50 gives us a speed of 14 meters per second. Finally then, why will the actual speed be less than this? Well, all of our work so far has assumed, as I said a few minutes ago, that the, there's no energy lost to the surroundings. All of that gravitational potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy. Now realistically, that's not gonna be the case. There is some drag, okay? Some of the energy is going to be lost to the surroundings as heat. So the kinetic energy will actually probably be a bit less than 4,900 joules. Okay? I mean, we're assuming here that the diver doesn't jump upwards before they come down, which may be the case, especially if it's pro. Okay? Uh, like I said, this is a really, really common trend of, uh, trend of questions. A, a, B, C, and D here, all of them, they come up all the time. Um, and if you can get, the, get uh, to grips with this, you're going to be doing really, really well. I've split it into sections for you, but realistically, what they could have done is they could have given you this information to start off with, they could have not given you A and B and just given you C, and then it would be probably like a five mark multi multiple step question in a GCSE exam. So that would be like a five marker just to work out C straight away, and you would you still have to go through the same process, but they would they would give it to you without these kind of hinter questions. If it comes early in the paper, they'll give you A, B, C. Later in the paper, they'll probably just go straight to C. Okay, good luck with this. Thank you.